What's up everybody, Fuzerex here. Today's topic, hacks. What are they? Why do we use them? Why do so many people hate them? I think it's because people don't know how to use them. It's kind of like writing with your opposite hand. You know, it's, it's just very different. And people just think, oh my gosh, this is so hard. I don't want to learn. And then they start resenting the people that do put in the work to learn them. But that's all going to change today, right now. Like we're going to break down the unstoppable power of the fibro hack. So let's do this. I'm going to keep my guys up. I do not have fancy video editing software, so I don't want to get blocked too many times and slow this up. All right, hack number one. That is the 213 left hook. That is the big daddy of the five row. This opens up the wall pass. It gets the goalie jumpy, jumpy. And if you, you master this, like it can be borderline unraceable. And if you want to be a hacking stud, you have to have this one. Like this needs to be your primary hack. All right, another one. Again, they should all have the same takeoff, same setup. Two, one, four, three. I saw Rico do this in a big singles match a long time ago. He, he ran this shot off like two or three times in a row and it just kept going in. So I immediately went to the table. It took a while to get the timing right with that little stall. You know, it kind of fakes the defender out in terms of where it's actually the release point is. So you can absolutely break that out for a point or two at any point in time. All right, number number three. All right, two, one, four, brush down. Garrett Schirkenbach, he did that on me so many times because I'd never seen it before, but the power in that is you're hitting it with the fourth man and it's, it's, actual, it's an actual brush because you're, you're kind of rolling it a little bit further back and almost the slower the better because the defender will chase it out and when, when he stops, you, you can hit that angle in there. All right, other one. That is a three one two stall. Like somebody, I read about this way back in the day. Somebody called it the Tommy because they thought he invented it. I don't know who invented it, but this one is beast. I don't see this used a lot, but this one's money because it it's the exact same take of take off of all your other hacks that went long. The goalie's going to be going long. That pass is designed, when you hit it perfect, it's designed to hit the corners. So that, I mean, it's just deadly. I could use that all day. It, it just blends so well with your series in terms of your hacks and your, your five row, your five row setup. All right, another one. Just, you don't even have to, to toss it. You know, the second the defender kind of comes off there, you know, you can just work that slider right in there. All right, another one. This little toss slider right here. This one's awesome because once you've established that you have your long, your big daddy one, and your big daddy needs to go around middle dot. If you're not going around middle dot, it's a little daddy's. The little cousin. Your big daddy should go over here and it's going to force the goalie to kind of come out a little bit more. And once they do that, I mean, this is huge. And you, you can just practice this. And so we'll just take a step back now that we've kind of gone through a few different hacks here. Is do, we take, do, we, do we take hacks right off the bat? Like when we see these holes, anytime it's there. You know, when, when we start playing and I see the defender have this kind of setup where it's this easy slider, do I want to take that right off the bat? Hell no. <laughs> I hope you guys go back to my five bar philosophy. We don't want to show our hand right away. Like I know there's some people out there that want to take a hack every time they see that way. Every time they see that, but we do not play that way. Right, Fuserex wannabes? No. <laughs> Why not? Well, A, it, it is show, again, it is showing our hand. We want that point when we need it, not just to have it. Like not all points are created equally. And two, we might not even need to hack to beat our opponent. So we might have to play them later in the night or on the weekend or, you know, next week. So let's just save all of our tricks. You know, we're using, we see these openings and we're just, we're just taking an inventory of what's there at all points. All right. And just like, you know, just like the hacks over here, you should do the same exact ones over there. You know, you have your, put these up. A little bit slower, but 
You've got your big daddy from the opposite side. You know, you've got your, your sliders. You know, and you want you can set these up too. And then like the Tommy, that stall pass that we did over here. You know, we can work that on this side. The reason that works so well is, you know, when you're playing, anytime you get a steal, you would bring that ball to your your passing row series on the near wall. Every time you get a steal, you do that. And then eventually, you know, you, you fake out the goalie and the defender because they, you've conditioned them to, to bail because you're bringing the ball over here. You, you're grooming them. <laughs> you know, you're grooming them, basically. And that is the power of foosball. So, I don't know how many hacks that was. That was a lot. But, again, they all look the same. They all have the same setup. They should all have the same setup, the same speed, the same takeoff. And they should all blend in with your passes. So... Let's talk about the philosophy behind these. Like, first off was, what does hacking do? Like, why do we even do it? So number one is, it flusters the other player, like especially newbies, because they don't know how to block it. They, they haven't practiced with the hand back there. And even seasoned players will get thrown out of their game. Like, I've played all ranks, and I can tell you from experience, there, there are some players, even great ones, even people walking around the room in their fancy jackets, <laughs> like some of those players will just give up playing their best game once you start owning them with hacks on the five row. And they'll make you feel bad too. They'll get pissy, throw a temper tantrum. And how do we respond to that, guys? Like, how do we respond to mental weakness? We feed off it, right? <laughs> we feed off that crybaby bullshit. Om nom 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 nom. So I'm gonna pause real quick and go a little bit off topic just, just because. So when you play a player and this is kind of a different topic for a different video, but it kind of relates to this. When, when you play a player who starts jarring and complaining and throwing a temper tantrum, maybe lifting the table, just getting shitty overall, it's easy to want to dial it back, you know, dial it back, you know, back down, be the nice guy. You kind of say to yourself, oh man, I'm pissing off a friend, a fellow foosball brother over there. I better ease up. So they calm down. And the next thing you know, you're, you're letting their reactions take you out of your game. So... Do we do that? No. <laughs> you do not think like that, guys. When you see your opponent crying, you, 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 picture, you picture them and imagine them waving a white flag because that's what they're doing. They're trying to, to do anything they can to stop this avalanche of pain that's raining down on them. It's this mental giving up, this mental weakness, and that's what it is. And so now that you know that, now that you know that, feed off that guys like you're like you're stealing their life force the, <laughs> you want them to cry you want them to get pissy do not let people's reactions intimidate you or change your game so i just had to get that out of me and i think that just ties in well with hacking because a lot of players think it's a cheap way to win and you're gonna find yourself being faced with that reaction a lot so what's the next point here i, I forgot what i'm even talking about oh yeah why do we want to hack um, number two, it opens up your passing lanes. Like when you start hitting a few of these hacks on somebody, they're going to be forced to respect them, which is going to open up your passes because they can't be 100% focused on blocking your five row anymore, if that makes any sense. So when we, and it's just like when we have a dominant five row, it's, we're, we're passing at such a high level, it opens up our hacks. You know, they're, they're focused so much on blocking the five row, we can get a couple easy hacks in. So it only stands to reason if we're hacking well it's going to open up our passes. Again, winning foosball is about keeping the other player off balance. Even if you you don't hack, you still need to keep them off balance by changing the timing of your shots and your passes. All right, why do we hack again? If you have an entire arsenal of shots that I showed you, it, it doesn't matter if they have a hand back there or not. Like These are calculated shots if you use them in the series. If you're using each hack to set up another hack and you're, getting, you're taking a reading on how they're reacting. These are these are not sloppy hacks used out of desperation. You're not just throwing them out there. You're, you're getting a read on how the other person is defending these. Like these are legitimate weapons. And it's just like scoring them from the two bar. If, if you can chalk up a point with, without having to go through that extra, you know, process of passing and shooting, like, like why not take it? And the fourth reason why we hack, we want to be able to win multiple ways. Like this is a strategy straight out of Todd Lafredo. Um, I read an interview from him. I think it's called Todd Speaks. If you want to Google that, it's amazing. So much great knowledge 
all in one document. And he said that somebody came up to him once at a tournament and said like, oh my gosh, you've got so many, you have like multiple personalities on the table and the problem, and each one of them plays at a pro master level. And he said that was the best compliments he could ever get. And he's right. You, you have to be able to win in different ways. You know, at some point in a, in a long tournament over a weekend, somebody might get on your pass for a little bit, might get on your shot. And if you could just stay one step ahead of them, or who knows, maybe you just start throwing out hacks. You know, that's like 80% of your game, but you know what you're doing. If the other person has not played you a whole lot, like you're going to win. So now that we've gone over some of the hacks and why we hack, let's talk about how to master this part of the game. So how do we get really, really good at this? Well, obviously practice, just like everything else. Um, not just at home, you know, it's not about just reps, you know, in your basement by yourself, but when you go to the bar, get there as early as possible, play as many pickup games as you can, and every time you get the ball on your five row, work this hacking series. If they, if they put a hand back there, even better. Now you can start having to think a little bit harder. Now you can start seeing, okay, like what are they doing back there? How can I use the next hack to fake them out? You know, because a lot of our hacks are designed over here and over here and sliders. Like we've got a legitimate game plan that is it's a very smart game plan using angles and hitting different holes. And the, the, the more you practice, the faster they get. Like they're going to have to start committing on these holes. And so even in pickups, just do this nonstop. Do not even, you know, pass to your three row. Just, just do this. This is if you choose to get good at hacking. You know, there's also another benefit to doing this. Like when you start playing to learn versus playing to win, you stop playing scared. Um, you've resigned yourself to winning or losing. Like it doesn't matter to you. And 100%, which means like 100% of your focus is going to be on getting better in an actual game situation versus, oh, I'm trying to win. Let me try to get a pass in. Let me, let me, you start thinking too much because you just want to win. Like just, you know, put yourself in a bubble, put yourself in the, in a vacuum where, hey, right now we just want to, we just want execution to come naturally instead of thinking about anything else. And trust me, guys, like this is not easy for most players. Most players just care about winning, even pick up games, even like the singles tournament. Like you have to, if you want to get good at something, especially this or a three row shot or your two row, you have to set your ego aside. You have to be OK losing short term so you can win long term. And I, I know that's going to sound crazy, but if you abandon your game plan when the going gets tough, you're never going to develop the confidence it takes to play the game and execute at the highest level. You know, the, the reason when I, when I was playing, going on tour, that my hacks got so good back in the day, it's because I broke a finger. I broke my middle finger um, playing softball and in my shooting hand and so I couldn't shoot at all but I don't want to stop playing foosball for two months so for two months all I did were five row hacks and, and singles and the singles tournament and pickup games and, and that's what it's going to take to just obliterate your opponent you know all right next point like how do we master hacking just like any other aspect of the game we're using a series we're setting up our opponent that we can we can go to um, we can go at any shot any hole any time um, please go back to watching my five bar theory video to understand this philosophy. Everything needs to look the same. We need to take off at, at different points in time. We need, we need to be able to hit different holes at different points in time. These hacks, they need to blend into your passing series for optimal results. And if you don't, if your hacks don't blend into your passing series, then you're just wasting possessions. Like, you know, if you, you know, if they, if they don't blend in, then your opponent's going to start getting a read on you. He's going to start, at least this is what I do when I, when I see people who, who I know have certain hacks, I start setting them up. I'm like, hey, this hack's going to be open. And when they go, I'm like, no, sorry. You know, I'm using their lack of deception against them. You know, I see players every week hack and they win, but there's a really big difference between hacking and hacking smart. And if, if you're a hacker and you're like, how do I know if I'm hacking smarter? I'm just a hacker. You know, if... If the goalie guys are over here and you're still getting your hack in, that's poor foosball. Like <laughs> that that's it. Like if you're if you're hacking in a wide open hole, then that's smart foosball. So, all right guys, I know this was a long video, but sometimes foosball needs these deeper talks. I expect you guys to um, start playing smart foosball. I want to see smart foosball from all you guys. So, keep on foozing and work on those hacks.